So uh, in, in my case, uh, working locally, uh, we began to challenge the restrained seclusion use in our school district. Mm -hmm. And one of the questions that came up, th this provides an opportunity to talk about work like yours, but one of the questions that came up very early was, well, if you're, we're not going to do this, what are we going to do? If we can't restrain or seclude a kid, then what? And, and that's when you get into talking about things like your book, which are, oh, you're looking for other things. How can yeah. we do this better? So right. it may come in yeah. rather than just saying, here's a great way you should be doing things. I've got ideas on how you should do your job. You know, maybe it's, it's, bringing to light some of the issues that might be there and pushing because you know we we know that a lot of you know this is based on science what you've been talking about yeah. and it's far more modern science than the science that's prevalent in a lot of our schools yes. the science prevalent in a lot of our schools is is classical behaviorism uh that was you know um you know <laughs> decades ago and you know was based on rats and pigeons and you know i've, I've had behaviorists tell me things like I don't care why this child is doing what they're doing. I just want to change their behavior. And your work is so important in, in realizing you've got to get below the iceberg. You've got to understand the why. But that change is hard 